Hello, Grace Church family. I hope you are all doing well. Um, happy Wednesday. It's a new day, so it's time for a new devotion. And um, this week I was thinking a lot about um, my time that I spent uh, in university. I, I went to Tyndale University and I studied philosophy. And a lot of people ask, well, what can you do with a philosophy degree? And that's a good question. Um, and I graduated about... A year and a half ago, I guess it was 2019 that I graduated, and um, I was so grateful to take that program and just studying philosophy and and learning more about apologetics, which is just like defending the faith and and um, knowing that um, what we believe is actually true, and knowing how to um, be like. Yeah, defenders of that. And I think one of the biggest uh, passages within scripture that talk about um, the foundation of uh, Christianity comes from 1 Corinthians, <laughs> 1 Corinthians 15. Um, the first little bit talks about the resurrection of Christ where it says like he died and he was raised according to the scriptures like all this stuff if you're in Awana you know that that's what uh, some of the letters that represent sparks stands for um, and uh, and it continues um, later and it talks about the resurrection of the dead so this is a conversation that Paul is having and he's he is um, using philosophical tactics that to, to argue his point, um, that's like really, it's actually really powerful when you go into it and when you like, um, study it a little bit. So he's using something called a conditional, uh, statement. So it's, it's like an if then statement. Um, so for example, an if then statement could be, if it's raining outside, then the grass is wet. Or if it's not raining outside, then the grass is not wet. And sometimes not all of those are true because you can have grass that's wet when it's not raining because you can have dew in the morning that makes the grass wet even though it's not raining. But you can be certain that if it's raining outside, then the grass will be wet, assuming that there's no other um, conditionals that play in, put like that have another factor in that. Anyways. Um, that was maybe not the best example that I could have used, but that's okay. Um, so anyways, so as you read through 1 Corinthians 15, you see so many conditional statements. So I'm just going to read starting at verse 12, and I, I'll, I'm just going to keep going until about verse 20, about verse 20. Yeah. So I'm just going to read it and, and listen to all these if-then statements. And sometimes it starts with if and it continues on and it never actually says then. So it never uses the actual word then. But if you're reading along, sometimes it uses a comma and that comma is kind of implying the then. The, the then is implied. So verse 12 says, Now if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. Which I think we could all agree with that. Like, if there's no such thing as a resurrection from the dead, then it wouldn't be possible for Christ to be raised. Anyways, and verse 14 continues, And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain, and your faith is in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God, because we testified about God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. He's continuing on arguing point by point through this this uh, this argument. Anyways, he continues verse 16. It says, For if the dead are not... If, oh my goodness. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. He's reiterating that point. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. That's a powerful thing. And I have a funny feeling that those who were reading at this time and the people that he was talking to didn't want to agree to the statement that says, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. I know that's not something that I would like to agree to because I, I don't want my faith to be futile and I don't want to be sitting in my sins. Um, so I think that they were starting to understand that maybe Christ did raise from the dead because it says, um, verse 17, I'll just read it again. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then those who also have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. So those who have gone before us, they have perished because if Christ didn't raise, there's no salvation. There's nothing that comes from that. So 
people who have gone on before us who have fallen asleep, like, they, they, there's no hope for them. Um, verse 19 continues, if in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. So it was just so interesting that he goes through and he says, if Christ hadn't been raised, then this would be true. If he hadn't been raised, then this would be true. And those those then parts of it are not things that people wanted to accept. Like, they did not want to believe that, um, that their faith was futile or they're still in their sins. And they wouldn't believe that. They wouldn't believe that to be true. So, but everything followed logically from one another. And if you agree to one thing, then those things just, it, they just become true by following them, um, by agreeing to it. So, um, I think that he, he used these tactics in order to allow people to really understand that Christ did actually raise from the dead and that the resurrection of Christ is so foundational to our, to our lives as Christians, to our walks, to our everyday life. Because if, if he hasn't been raised, then all these things follow. Our preaching's in vain. Our faith is in vain. And like, we're misrepresenting God. But praise the Lord that that's not true. That in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. Hallelujah. Because that's what gives us purpose. That's what allows our faith to actually be fruitful. That's what allows us to actually be Christians. Because if there was no resurrection of the dead, there would be no purpose to us. And praise the Lord that we don't only have hope for this life. We do have hope for this life, but we do have hope for a future life. And I thank God for that every day that, oh, sorry, (laughs) that we are able to have hope for the future. And I just think it is so incredible and it's so foundational to understand and to really be gospel living people, to be believing that he did raise from the dead and that he, um, he's worthy to be praised because of all these things. And so I hope that this was, this was clear and that you kind of understand the fact that if these things happened, then this would happen. And, uh, Paul uses so much philosophy in his writing. So it's kind of cool. And apologetics within Paul's writing in particular is like really, really interesting. So I hope today that you just have more confidence in the resurrection of Christ and more confidence in the fact that our savior really did die and he really was raised from the dead with the power of God. So, um, yeah, I hope that you would, you would go forth in this and just, uh, yeah, have the confidence to know that our faith is not futile and our, our faith is not in vain and that we can fight this fight for the purpose of God and for the purpose of Christ who did in fact raise, was raised from the dead. Anyways, I hope this brings you hope for today and for the future. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Bye guys.